this video, I'm going to be creating a dress from Simplicity Pattern 2444. It's from their Project Runway line. And as you can see, there's several dresses to choose from. And the nice thing about this is that you can pick and choose many different options and create a unique dress for you. So I'm going to actually be doing this version of the dress, but adding this tie to it. So the important thing that you will need to pay attention to when looking at the front of the pattern is not only that you got the right pattern, which is right here, but also you want to get your correct size. This particular pattern has an envelope for sizes 4 through 12 and then another envelope for sizes uh, above 12. So you want to make sure that the envelope you pick has your size. Now you cannot depend on your retail sizing to be the same as the sizing listed for pattern pieces. If you are a size normally uh, a size 8, you may not be a size 8 in the patterns, which is important to take your measurements and then consult the back of the pattern envelope in order to make sure that you're getting the correct size. So we're going to look at the back now so we can figure all that out. At the top of the back of the pattern envelope, the very first section they normally have is the suggested fabrics. So you'll see here fabrics and then a long list of all the different types of fabrics. This is what they recommend using for this particular pattern. So here we have cotton, cotton plaids, gingham, laundered cottons, and so on. You also notice at the end it says extra fabric needed to match plaids, stripes, or one-way design fabrics. So if you get something unique like a striped fabric, you might you may need extra fabric in order to get all your pieces to fit in it and for everything to go in the same direction. The next thing is we have notions, and this is anything extra we may need besides the fabric in order to complete this outfit. So you need matching thread, one 22 inch zipper, and a hook and eye. So now we're gonna move on to body measurements. Next we have body measurements. So you see here we have bust, waist, hip, and then the back, neck to waist. All these measurements are in inches and it's important to get your accurate measurement information so you pick the correct size. We really want our clothes to fit us. To get a tutorial on how to get your correct body measurements, you can check out our website on professorpincushion.com and we actually have a tutorial that shows you how to take them. So when you pick your measurements, you're then going to go down and you'll see these two rows of pattern sizes. The first one, this top one right here, this is US and the bottom one is for European sizes. So once you find it, you just go down. So if this is me, I would be a size 12. Now the nice thing about this pattern is you have your bodice and then you have your skirt pattern pieces. So if you happen to be a 36 inches in the bust, you could make your bodice a size 14. But if your hip size is a 36, then you can do your skirt in a size 12. You may have to make a few minor adjustments to make the skirt and the bodice fit, but that's a nice way to, to fit them so they fit you perfectly. So now we're gonna move on to finding out how much fabric we need. For figuring out how much fabric we're gonna need for our dress, you're gonna need to know what type of dress you're going to make from this pattern piece. What I love about the Project Runway series and the Simplicity Patterns is that it comes with this really nice handy sheet which lays out each of the elements. So it's basically the same dress, but you have two different collar versions. You can make it sleeveless. You can have the three-quarter sleeves, the short sleeves, and then you can add this little tie. So you can just have this laid out and then I'd like to make a copy and cut out the different elements, which I have right here. And I can lay it on my little body here until I find the style that I want. And you can always come back and then do a different design and create a totally different dress. So I have the bodice, the skirt, I'm going to do the cape collar and then I'm going to add the tie. Once you know exactly which of these elements you want to use, go ahead and write down in your notes because on the back of the pattern envelope, it actually breaks down each of them. So it may say, for the bodice, you need this amount of fabric. For the cape collar, you need this amount. 
and then the stand-up collar, you're gonna need a different amount. So as long as you're organized and you know exactly which one of these elements you wanna use, it'll make finding out how much fabric you need a lot easier. Once we know which elements of the dress we're going to use, we can move on to the back of the pattern envelope. And you'll see here, just as I said before, everything is separate. We have dress bodice, the dress skirt, and then each of the other elements. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a check mark next to each of the elements that I am using. That way I could kind of weed out the stuff that I'm not using. So I definitely am doing the bodice, the dress skirt, the tie-ins, because I want that bow in the front. And see here is the stand collar. I'm not doing that one. I am doing the cape collar and I'm making it sleeveless so I don't have to worry about any of these other sleeve options. Here's the three quarters and here's the short sleeve. So in each of these boxes, it tells you what amount of fabric to buy. So now you're gonna find your size and I was a size 10. Let me just shift this down a little bit. And here we have the sizes again. And you're gonna go down to your size and then you're going to find the yardage of fabric. Now, if you look over here, you see 45 inches and 60 inches. What this is telling you is if you have a 45 inch width fabric, which says on the end of the bolt, you're gonna need one yard. If your fabric is 60 inches in width, you're gonna need three quarters for a size 10. My fabric is 60 inches in width, so I'm gonna get three quarters of a yard just for the bodice. Also here, you'll see interfacing. This is separate. I'm going to need 3 eighths of a yard of lightweight fusible interfacing. So that's separate from the fabric, but you definitely need that. Next, we're gonna move on to dress skirt. So again, you'll see it's separated, 45 inches and 60 inches. Again, size 10, my fabric 60 inches. So I'm going to need an additional one yard and 5 eighths for the skirt part. For the tie-ins, I'm gonna need one one yard and five eighths. And here it's telling you a 45 or a 60. So for this, it doesn't matter what the width is, you're gonna need the same amount. Then I'm gonna to move to my cape collar and I'm gonna need an additional half yard. And it doesn't matter if it's 45 or 60. So that's the end of my check marks. So then I'm gonna add all of these up and it's gonna tell me that I need four and a half yards of fabric in order to make the skirt of my choice. The next step is we're going to have to figure out which pattern pieces we need to cut out in order to make our dress. So when you pull out your instructions out of your pattern envelope, you're gonna see a page that looks something like this. All the different variations of the dresses, and then you have pattern diagrams over here, and you'll see there's numbers on them. Each of these is a different pattern piece. They're actually labeled down here with the corresponding number. So number one, bodice front, that's this piece right here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and make a check next to each one that I need in order to keep myself organized so I don't have to cut out unnecessary pieces if I don't need them. So we have bodice front and back. Well, I definitely need the top of the dress, so I need both of these pieces. The front facing and we have the back facing. This is for the collar of the bodice. It helps it give a finished look and also supports the collar. So if you're doing the bodice, you definitely need both of these facings. Stand collar, I am doing the cape collar, so I don't need to worry about piece number five. So this piece right here, I don't have to worry about cutting it out. But I definitely need six and seven. The knot, this goes in the middle of the cape collar, which you see right there. I don't have to worry about the sleeve because I'm not making a sleeve, but I will need armhole facing because I definitely need that support and I need it to be finished. Definitely need the skirt front and back and it has a, a side pocket in the skirt, which is fun, so I need that. And I need the tie end so I can have the bow. So I put a check mark next to each one I need. So I need one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So now we're gonna get started on cutting out our pattern pieces.
When you pull your pattern pieces out of your envelope, it's gonna come printed on tissue paper and look something like this. You have your pattern piece and then you have a bunch of lines coming off of it. Mine is sideways, but that's okay. So the nice thing is that on each pattern piece, you're gonna have your pattern number printed on it. Here we have 2444. This is nice so if you find a random pattern piece somewhere, you know what pattern envelope it goes in. You also have the number. So again, remember I needed pattern number one. Here it is right here. So if you look on each pattern piece, there's gonna be a number that's gonna go back to the diagram that we had checked before. It also states what it is, bodice front. So I know I need to cut this one out and now I just need to know what size I'm cutting it out. I'm doing a size 10 and you'll see here all the different numbers. Each of these line goes with one of these sizes. So if I'm a size 10, I'm gonna cut out on the line right above the 10, right here. So all these other lines, you're still gonna see them once I cut out a size 10, but that's fine. So you're gonna cut right along the line, you can cut right on the line, but don't cut into the line. So it's all right to cut right on the line or maybe cut right outside the line, but you really wanna be as accurate as possible. You also see these little triangles on the end. These are called notches. And these are important because you're going to be matching your fabric notches to different areas. This one right here is for the shoulder. So you're gonna have your, the back of your shoulders and the front of your shoulders, and you're gonna match them up right at these notches right here. That's why it's very important to make note of them. And now you can do two different ways. Some people like to just cut into the pattern piece, so you have a notch that goes into the pattern. Or what I like to do is I'll cut a notch that goes out like this. So it's a little triangle again that sits right on top of this triangle. Just makes it easier for me. So we're gonna cut all along the number 10 and then you'll see down here, it's kind of jagged. You're gonna follow the 10 and then you're gonna follow this line right here of the zigzag. They're pretty close. You just need to make sure that you follow the right line. So you're gonna cut out all the pieces that have all the numbers that you checked and you're gonna do your size. If, you're pa if the pattern piece right here is the one you need and it's just a solid line, that means it's for all sizes. So you just cut right along that line right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out all my pieces and then we're gonna work on setting it up on our fabric so we can do the correct method for that. Next, we're gonna look at cutting layouts. This is a special map that shows us how we need to lay out our pattern pieces onto our fabric in order to get the most out of our fabric. So they've done all the work for us. So if you look here, you see this says dress bodice, including knot. So this layout is just for the bodice. They're gonna do another one for the skirt and for the sleeves or collar. So you'll see there's one here and one here. The difference is this one as we can see over here, is for fabric that's 45 or 44 inches in width. This one here is for 58 or 60 inches in width. So they just show you the two different layouts um, just because they're gonna be set up differently. The nice thing is they also tell you which pieces you're going to use, this numbered right here. But on these actual pattern pieces, you'll see it's also numbered. So you'll see number one, two, three, four, 10, and eight. It's gonna be the same numbers for this one down here. I'm doing the 60 inch, so I'm gonna look at this one. Now you're gonna see that the fabric is folded in half. Here's the salvages up here. So that means number one and number three, you're gonna place on the fold of the fabric. So when you cut it out, it's gonna open up and you're gonna have one big piece for number one and for number three. Now you see how these two pieces are shaded? If we look at this code up here, this is telling us that you're gonna place the pattern piece with the writing side down, so essentially upside down. All these other ones are gonna be with the printed side facing up towards you, so you're gonna be able to see it right side up. They just do it that way so it fits better in the, the area that they give you. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay out my pattern pieces and show you what that looks like. And I'm also gonna show you for the interfacing. 
For the interfacing, you only need pieces three and four. And again, they show you down here, they just fold the lightweight interfacing in half and they have three and four and you're gonna cut that out as well. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and lay out my pieces so you can see what they look at. You can see that I have a layout similar to the ones that are laid out in the simplicity pattern directions. Number three and number 10 are upside down. All the other ones are facing up. Number one and number three is placed on the fold of the fabric. And uh, if you want to have an easier time with your pattern pieces, you can iron them before laying them out onto your fabric. Uh, just make sure that you have your iron on the lowest setting possible because we don't want to damage the paper at all. Also, it's a good idea to pre-treat your fabric because you don't want to have to worry about it shrinking after it's already made. You can consult our tutorial, Pre-Treatment of Fabric, in order to get more information on that, and that is on our website, professorpincushion.com. So when you're ready to start pinning your pieces, let me get some straight pins here, you're always going to want to pin parallel to the edge of the, your pattern piece. So it's gonna look something like that. It goes right along the line here. The problem is, if you put it perpendicular to the edge, like that, the pin here is sticking out, so when you're cutting along the edge, you're then gonna have a problem. That's why you always do it parallel. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish pinning all my pieces, and normally what I do is I start at one corner, and then I spread my pattern, and I kind of work out this way. So it just kind of makes it a little bit easier if you start at one area and then move out. So I'm gonna do that for all my pieces. And next I'm gonna show you how to do the layout for the lightweight interfacing. Here I have my lightweight interfacing and I went ahead and I folded it. So I have this nice fold right here to place my number three pattern. And here's number four, doesn't need to be on a fold. And you just do the same thing as you would do for the fabric. Start at one end and then work your way out, putting your pins parallel to the edge. So next we're gonna look at the layout for the dress skirt and the tie-ins. I don't have to worry about the stand collar because I'm doing the other one, the cape collar, so I can just ignore this part. Again, you see two different layouts. We have one for the 44, 45 inch width fabric and then the other one for the 58 and 60 inch width fabric. So I have this size fabric, so I'm gonna be doing this one. So again, they have a fold and they have the salvages um, as part of the fabric layout. And you have 12, 11, and 13 are the pieces they're using. 12, again, is upside down. 11 and 13 is facing upward. Now you see 13 here and 13 here. They're both the pockets. It's both the same pattern piece. You actually only have one number 13 pattern piece. So what you need to do is lay it, pin it, cut it out, and then place it again in another part of the fabric, pin it, and cut it out again. So that way you end up with four pieces. Now you also see these arrows right here on the pattern pieces. This is for the grain line. You always want these arrows to be going in the same direction. So in this case, they're all going in a parallel direction to the fold and the salvage of the fabric. So if we do this one this way and this one this way with the arrows going in this direction, and all of a sudden I take number 11 and I go this direction with the arrow so it's going perpendicular, that means the grain line is gonna be different. Sometimes it doesn't matter and sometimes it really makes a big difference. You always want the grain line to be going the same way because you want your fabrics to look like they're cut from the same bolt of fabric. And just a little thing by changing the grain line can make it look like a different color. So that's why it's always important that the arrows are going in the same direction. Now number 11 and 12 look like they're placed right on the fold of the fabric, just like we did with the bodice piece, but actually they don't need to be placed on the fold. If you look at this one, here's 12 and 11. This is the salvage, this is the salvage right here. They're not placed on a fold. So you can go ahead, you could place it close to the fold, but you're still gonna cut out on this side of the pattern piece. So you're gonna cut out all the way around. So you end up with two number 12s and two number 11s. Now for the tie-ins, 
You'll see right here it says single thickness. They actually took the width of the fabric, opened it up so it's one big single piece. They did 14 and then they took, they cut it out, took the pattern piece, laid it again upside down and then cut it out again. So that way you end up with two number 14s. And again you see these arrows, they're going in the same direction even though the pattern pieces look like they're going in opposite directions. So that's the main thing, just that the arrows go in the same direction. So now I'm going to show you the, what the actual layouts look out for the dress skirt and the tie-ins. Here's the layout for the skirt part of the dress. So we have number 12 upside down, here's number 11 right side up, and then 13 over here. So again I would do this and then I would move the pattern piece over to here and cut it out again so I have four pieces. Now here you can see the arrow I was talking about for the grain line. See how it's going this direction parallel to the edge of the fabric. The same thing as number 13 up here and 12 you can't see because it's upside down but I can see it is going in this direction. So it's just important again to make sure that those arrows are going the same direction. So now I'm going to show you for the tie-ins. Here we have one of the tie ends, number 14, and I open up my fabric so it's a single layer of fabric here. And uh, again, we're going to need two of these, so I'm going to pin this, cut it out, and then lay it out again over in that section there. It's a really big pattern piece, so it's kind of hard to demonstrate. But again, you're going to have two of these pieces once you're done. Last but not least, we now have our setup for the cape collar. I don't have to worry about this interfacing because this is for the stand collar. And then these two are for the sleeves, and I'm doing sleeveless. So I can ignore these three and just look at this one, which is our last one. So here's our setup right here. It's folded in half. So we're cutting out two pieces of number six and seven. And then also we have number eight again, which is the knot. So again, you're seeing the arrows need to be going in the same direction, so the grain line is correct. And for the setup, you only see one because it doesn't matter if it's 44 or 60 inch with fabric. It's going to be the same setup. You don't need to place any of these pieces right on the fold. So all I need to do is just make sure that I cut two out of six and seven and then one of eight. So uh, let me show you the setup for that one. So here's my last setup. I have pattern piece number six, number seven, and number eight. Again, making sure the arrows are going parallel to the edge of my fabric here. Now when you're ready to start cutting out and everything is pinned down, again, you'll want to cut car carefully along the line and also cut out your notches on your fabric as well. We really want to transfer these notches onto our fabric piece. Before moving your pattern pieces from your fabric, you're going to want to take a look over and see if you see any circles, such as over here and down here. These circles are very important to transfer the marks to your fabric pieces because they usually indicate a placement for something, such as right here is a placement for the sleeve, and down here, the series of dots is for making the dart. So in order to transfer your marks, over here you see a series of dots. They all have numbers which indicate the size. So I find my size and I only have to do it for this dot right here. All I'm going to do is take my fabric marker, lift up the pattern, and then I'm going to mark where the pin enters on that side, lift this up, and then do it on the back. I'm going to do it on both sides because there are two pattern pieces that I have here. You're going to do the same thing for here, this dot this dot and this dot. Again, they have the sizes. But you'll see the, the dotted line right here. That's where we're going to sew for our dart. So all you need to do is then take a ruler, match up the dots, and then draw a line. You can do a dotted line matching these dots. So these ones right here, and then these ones over on that side. So you're going to do that for all your pattern pieces. And if you look at the skirt, both back and front, you're going to see there's going to be a series of lines for the pleats. You would do the same thing for that one as you would do for the dart, so you definitely want to mark those lines. Now we're done prepping, so we're ready to start sewing. 
you're going to pull out your directions, which are going to look something like this. And the way to read directions is you'll notice that they have pictures and then they have written directions. So you'll see numbers next to the pictures. These correspond to the directions on this side. So they give it to you in picture form and then they also give it to you in written form. So whatever is the easiest for you to understand. One of the keys up here is the fabric key and you'll see four different boxes. One says right side, one says wrong side, interfacing and lining. This is for reading these pictures here. So if you see a mostly solid color, like right here, this is showing you're looking at it, the pattern piece or the fabric piece from the right side. If it's mostly white, like here, you're looking at these from the wrong side of the fabric piece and so on with interfacing and lining. So now we're gonna get started with pattern direction number one and we're gonna go through each one so we can create the stress. Direction number one says so stay stitch bodice front and bodice back neck edges one half inch from the cut edge in direction of arrows. So here we have the bodice front. These are the shoulders, the neckline. This right here is the armhole and this is the bottom and the sides. So we need to stay stitch on the neck edges. What you're gonna be doing is stitching from here to here a half inch from the edge. So measuring from this edge in a half inch. And you're just gonna stay stitch around here. Now the stay stitch is the largest stitch your machine can do, like a basting stitch. But since it's gonna stay in permanently, we're gonna make sure to back stitch on the beginning and on the end. So this is the bodice front. I'm gonna remove this and bring in the bodice back. So this is the back and it's in two pieces because there's gonna be a zipper. So we'd be doing the same thing, except we're gonna be stay stitching from here to here and from here to here. Again, a half inch from the edge and doing a back stitch on both sides since it's going to be staying in. So now I'm gonna break out the machine so I can show you how to do that. Okay, now I'm going to do my stay stitch. And it's similar to a basting stitch. We're just doing back stitching on both, the, on both ends, a half inch from the edge and the reason why you do a stay stitching, you're gonna do it only on the neck areas because we wanna make sure that the curviness of the neck area does not stretch or distort. And by doing a stay stitch, it's gonna keep it curved. So it's just a way to reinforce that edge and make it a lot easier for when you're working with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this for the front and back neck curved areas. And then we're gonna move on to step two, which is working on the darts. Step number two, to make darts in bodice front and bodice back, with right sides together, fold the fabric along the center of the dart, bring broken lines and small dots together. On the inside, place pins at right angles to broken lines and stitch the dart from the wide end to the point. So remember these little triangle lines that we had made from our pattern pieces? Now we're gonna be making darts out of them. So what you're gonna do is I'm looking at the wrong side of my pattern piece. This dot and this dot is going to match. I'm gonna fold it outward like this. And so this dot right here is gonna make the point at the end. So I'm gonna lift this up and I'm gonna fold it like this. I'm gonna stick my pin through one of the dots and see if it matches up with the other, almost. Just make a quick adjustment. Okay. And then you're going to put your pins like that. I'm gonna put a pin at the end of my dart, right at the mark at the end, like that. And then I'm gonna be doing pins all along this so it's flat because I'm going to then be stitching on my dotted line from this point up to my dot here. So it's definitely gonna go at an angle. So you're going to be doing this for all your darts on your bodice, both on the front and on the back. 
When sewing your darts, you're going to just use a regular width stitch. And again, I'm starting at the bottom of my bodice, so the widest part of the triangle. And don't forget to do a couple of back stitches at the end. And I'm just following my line. And the reason that you do darts is because it makes the bodice more fitted, so it'll look better. Now when you get to the end, the very end of your triangle, right at the point, you're not going to do a back stitch because sometimes that will cause a little bubble right there. So all you're going to do is just trail off the end of the fabric, which I'll show you. And then once we take it off, you can just keep your, your uh, strings long and just hand tie a little knot at the end there. And that will keep it looking nice and neat. So now I'm getting to the end. And all I'm going to do is just run it right off the fabric like that and then pull it out and cut it off nice and long so then I can hand tie that knot. So I'm going to do these for each of my darts, both on the front and back of my bodice. To demonstrate how to do the knot at the end of your dart, here I have my extra string. All I'm going to do is make a loop and put the end of the thread through that loop. Grab it from the other side and just try to get the knot as close to the point as you can get. Once you've done that, all you do is just trim it off. And you just have to press your darts, which I've already done on my back, and you're going to press them in the direction of the center of the garment. Now it doesn't look like it. This is actually the back center where the zipper is going to go and there's no darts on it. If we look over here, the side seam area, you have a dart and here's the armhole. So this is the center. So I press my dart. Here it is right here towards this direction. And I would do the same for the one on the other side. And it's going to be pressed in this direction. So they'll be facing each other at this point right here. So let me show you the front bodice so you can see what that looks like. Here's a view of the front bodice, and as you can see, I have all my darts pressed towards the center of the bodice. So these are pressed this way, and these ones are pressed in this direction. Step number three says stitch center front seam. So you're going to take your front skirt, both pieces, number 11, and you're going to take a look at it, and you're going to see one side is going to have the double notches, that's going to be where you have two notches right next to each other. I just make a big one and then cut off the end so that way, that's why mine looks a little square. And then on the opposite side, you should have a notch that's just a single notch, just a little skinny one right there. So here I have my two pieces of my front skirt. Here's one, here's the other one. And they're going to be matched up from the end to the top and then match right at the notches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin this area right here because this is where I'm going to stitch my 5 8 inch seam allowance. So I'm going to take my straight pins and place them perpendicular to the edge all along this length here. So your pins are going in this direction. And I'm just going to finish pinning this and then take it to the the machine so I can do my seam. When doing a standard seam allowance, you're always going to have your machine at a regular width stitch and it's going to be at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. That's just standard. If you look at the general directions on the simplicity directions, you'll see that they state that the seam allowance is 5 8 Now it'll always be this unless it states otherwise. So I'm just going to sew right along the edge here. And uh, when you're finished with your seam, it's always standard that you press that seam open so that it lays nice and flat. So I'm going to go ahead and finish stitching this until I get to the end, at which point I'll do another back stitch. And then I'll press the seam open and we'll move on to the next step. Step number four. To make pleats in skirt front and skirt back on outside, fold along solid lines bringing folds to broken lines matching small dots at center, front, pin, based across raw edge. 
So we're going to be working on the pleats now for step number four. Now at the top of your skirt pattern, you're going to see a series of lines like this. We have solid ones and we have dotted ones. These marks you should have transferred to your fabric pieces. You see mine right there, solid and dotted. So essentially what they're saying is you're going to take the solid line, you're going to fold it, and I'm just using my pattern piece as an example here, like this, and then you're going to bring that to your dotted line. Once you've done that, you just pin right here at the top to hold it, and you're going to move on to the next one, and then the next one. You're going to do this for both pieces of the skirt back and the skirt front pieces. Once you've done that, then you just baste across the edge, holding this, and that's what creates your pleats. So now let's move on to my fabric piece, my solid line, and you're gonna be doing this on the right side of your fabric piece. So the right side is facing up towards me. I'm gonna fold this like this, bring it to the dotted line, Make sure you don't have any wrinkles there. Nice and flat. And then pin it. And then this one, I'm going to fold it, bring it to the dotted line. Just smooth this out a little bit. And then I'm going to pin that one. So you'll see your, your pleats are starting to form and it'll be easier once it's all basted. So I just have one more to do on this one and then I just have to do my other pieces for the skirt. So I'm gonna go ahead, finish pinning it and then we'll go to the machine so we can baste it. When doing your basting stitch, you're gonna to wanna to have your sewing machine width on the longest stitch possible. And it's just a temporary stitch. We're just holding our pleats in place until we attach the bodice of our dress to our skirt. And at that point, we'll have a permanent seam in. So again, we're just holding this down. It doesn't matter where you stitch it, if you do it at a half inch or five eighths, because it'll eventually just be taken out. So I'm gonna do this for my skirt skirt back, both pieces, and then the skirt front, which is now one big piece since we did the seam along the center front. And you don't even have to go the whole length, just go the length of the pleats and then pull it out, no back stitch. Step number five, with right sides together, pin pocket to garment, matching large dots, having raw edges even, stitch in three eighths inch seam. So now we're gonna work on putting in our pockets into our skirt. This is my front skirt. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to match up. You'll see these little dots right here. I have these two and then I have a small one right here. I don't have to worry about the small one because that's for the tie end. These large ones are for my pocket. So I'm gonna match right side to right side. So right side of my pocket to right side of my skirt. Matching up these dots with these dots and this notch with the notch in my pocket right here. So all the edges sh should match, all my dots should match. And when they do, I'm going to stick a pin like this all along this edge because we're gonna stitch 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge. So instead of a 5 eighths inch seam allowance, this one's going to be 3 eighths. Now you'll notice that you have four pocket pieces. So I have one on this side of my skirt. I'm gonna do one on the other side and then one for each of my back skirts because we're gonna have two sides to each pocket and there's two pockets. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish pinning this up and then take it to the machine for a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And then we'll move on to the next part of continuing with our pockets. Once all four of your pocket pieces have been sewn onto the sides of the skirts, you're then going to wanna to press that pocket outwards so that the seam is going towards the pocket. So it's gonna look just like this. 
Step number seven is in two parts. We're going to do the first part first. With right sides together, stitch skirt front to bodice front at waistline seam, placing small dot at center front of bodice and having raw edges even. Press seam toward bodice. So here I have my skirt front. You can see the seam right down the middle here. And then I have my two pockets right there that have been pressed outward. So what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna take my bodice front. This is my bodice front. Now both pieces right now are right side up. I'm gonna take my bodice and I'm gonna turn it. So now the right sides are together. Right side of bodice, right side of skirt. Now the edge right here where you have the ends of your darts, that's the edge that's gonna match up with the edge of your skirt. The center of the bodice is gonna match up right where you have the center seam right here. So let me grab some straight pins. And I'm just going to pin in the middle. And I'm gonna make sure that the edges here match the edges of my skirt. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Edge of bodice, edge of skirt. And then I'm just going to finish pinning all along this edge up here. And then it's gonna to go to the machine to get a standard 5 8 inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, you're gonna press the bodice open and all this seam allowance is gonna be pressed upwards towards the bodice. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we're gonna work on the second part of step seven. The second part of step seven, with right sides together, stitch skirt back sections to bodice back se sections. At waistline seam matching centers and having raw edges even, press seam toward bodice. So here's my back skirt, and remember there's still two pieces of the back skirt. This is just one of them. You're gonna be doing the same exact thing with the other one. Basically, we're going to be doing the same thing we did for the front. So here is my back skirt with the right side facing up. I'm going to take my bodice, put them right side to right side, and you know which bodice to use, because this is the side of the skirt this is my armhole of my bodice in the side right here. So obviously we want it to be going in the same direction. If I had put this right side to right side and it was going this way, so the armhole was going towards the center of the back of the skirt, then that would be the wrong bodice. You'd have to grab the other one. This is the right one. So now I'm going to be matching up the edges of the bottom of the bodice with the top of the skirt here. And you'll see you have a notch right here at the skirt. This is going to match up with the notch at the bottom of the bodice. So I'm going to pin this. And then I'm going to match the edges again. And once this is all pinned, I'm going to do it with my other uh, back skirt part with the other bodice. And then do a standard 5 8 inch seam allowance. Again, pressing the seam when I'm done towards the top of the bodice. I've stitched my bodices to my skirts for both the front and the back. So this is just what my fr the front of my dress looks like so far. Here is the seam, stitching them together, and I have my seam under here pressed up towards the bodice. And now we're ready to move on to the next step. We're gonna be working with the tie ends. Step number eight is fold tie end in half lengthwise with right sides together having raw edges even. Stitch in 3 8 inch seam, leaving an end with small and large dots open. Trim seam and corners. So here I have one of my tie ends. You should have two, but I'm just gonna demonstrate with one. The right side is facing up towards me. I'm going to fold this in half like this matching my raw edges here. I'm going to pin from this point to the tip of the point right here, and this area is where I'm going to be stitching a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. This area right here is going to stay open and you're not going to touch 
this area up here. So I'm going to go ahead and pin it and I'm going to do my seam allowance. Once you've done that, what you're going to do is you're going to trim off this little top corner right here, not cutting your seam allowance, and this corner right here. You're also going to trim a little bit of your seam, just so it's a little bit smaller. But I can show you that after I finish stitching this. So let's get to pinning and stitching. So I've done my seam allowance on my tie-in, on both of them actually. So after I finish doing that, I'm going to cut this little corner right here without hitting my seam allowance and cut this one. And then I'm just going to trim down my seam allowance uh, on this side and along this side, but I'm just going to show on this side because it's easier. I'm just going to trim off a little bit so you leave about a quarter of an inch like that. Once I finish doing that, I'm going to flip it right side out and then I'm going to press it. Then we're going to move on to the next step, step number nine. For attaching the ties, we're going to look at step number nine. On outside, pin tie into front matching small and large dots having raw edges even. Baste. Pin free ends of tie ends out of the way. So I'm going to take one of my tie ends here that I have turned right side out and I pressed. And uh, right now we're looking at the front of my dress. Here's the bodice skirt and pocket. And you're gonna see a large dot on the bodice. And then I have a small dot right here, right above the pocket. If you look at your tie end, right where it's folded, I have my large dot. And then right where we have this bottom seam, that's where our small dots were. So we're gonna match this seam up with this dot and this large dot with this one just like this, and I'm going to do the same thing with my tie end on the other side. So I'm just going to pin this, matching the raw edge of the tie with the raw edge of the dress, and then I'm just going to baste, and again, this is just a temporary stitch just to hold it, so it doesn't matter at, um, if you do it at a half inch seam allowance or not, but I'm going to do mine at a half inch seam allowance. So that's going to hold it. I'm going to do it on the other side. Once you've basted it, you're then just going to want to fold up the ends of your ties and pin them to the front of your dress just so we can just keep it out of the way. So maybe do a couple pins here and here um, so we don't have to worry about it getting in the way when we do our side seams. I've basted my tie ends to the front of my dress here and you can also see that I pinned the ends in order to keep them out of the way of uh, the side seams here. So that brings us now to step number 10 and it reads pin front to back at side seams matching large dots and one continuous stitching stitch side seams and pockets squaring stitching at large dots. Basically what this means is we're now going to attach the front or the back of the dress to the front. So I'm going to grab my two back pieces. Here's one. We'll do it this one first and then I'll do the other one. And then we got to place them right side to right side. Here's the back bodice. And here it is. So, so you can see I know it's going the right way because I have the pocket matching. And basically now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin from the bottom of the shoulder or right underneath the arm all the way down to here where you have your big dot for your pocket and then we're going to pin around the pocket so pinning the two pockets together and then continuing on from here down to the end of the dress so this is one side of the back I'm then going to grab my other back which I have right here and I'm going to be doing the same thing on this other side. So I'm going to go ahead and start pinning. Uh, once you finish pinning from here again around the pocket down to the end of the dress you're then going to do a standard 5 8 inch seam allowance and then we'll show you what to do uh, after you finish stitching that. After you've stitched your side seams and around your pocket we can then move on to step number 11 Clip garment back seam allowances at end of pockets, 
as shown, press seam open above and below clips. Press pocket toward front. So what that means is on both sides, both side seams, I'm going to, you have the point where you did your stitching for your pocket and then you pivot to finish the rest of the side seam. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clip like that right into my seam allowance, not getting the stitches. I'm gonna do that below the pocket and I'm gonna do it above very carefully here, making sure not to cut anything important. Okay. And then I'm gonna press my seam allowance open, just as you would any other seam allowance, below the pocket and above the pocket to right um, at the lower part of your sleeve. So you're gonna do that for both sides and then you're gonna take your pocket and press it towards the front of the dress. The front of the dress is what's showing here, so I would press it in this direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll move on to step number 12. Okay, so this is starting to look like a dress. Let's move on to step number 12. Stitch center back seam from lower edge to notch, back stitch at notch to reinforce seam, stitch front to back at shoulder seam. So this is actually two parts. We're gonna do the first part which is uh, stitching the center back seam from lower edge to notch. So here I have the back view of my dress. It's uh, wrong side out, so this is the wrong side facing up towards us. And here I have the center part of my dress in the back, right down the middle. So what they want us to do is pin, and if you look right down here in the middle, you're gonna see there's gonna be a notch. I have a notch here, and then I have one right here. So you're gonna match up those notches and stick a pin right there. And then I'm gonna pin all along here until I get to the end. So I'm gonna match up this edge. So we're gonna stitch a 5 8 inch seam allowance from the notch to the end, and that's gonna create our center back seam. The next part of step 12 is to stitch front to back at shoulder seams. So the shoulders of this dress is this part and this part up here. Now you'll notice on both sides, on the back and the front, again, you have these little notches that you need to match. So you're going to have right side to right side. Again, we're looking at the wrong side of the back this is the right side of the front, right side of the back. So this is gonna go together and you're going to pin and then stitch a 5 8 inch seam allowance from here to here. And you're gonna do the same thing for the shoulder over here. So the dress is now gonna be attached at the shoulders and at the side. Remember after you create your seams to press them open before continuing further. So now we're gonna move on to step 13, which is about installing the zipper into the back of the dress. There's quite a few steps under this one, so we're gonna take them one at a time. The first one is press under 5 eighths of an inch on back opening edges. So again, here's the back of my dress. Here's my center that's still open above my notch, which is right here, and it's still wrong side out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my sewing gauge and on each side, so on this side and on this edge, from my notch to the very top, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold over. So the right side is going to the wrong side of my garment and measure 5 eighths of an inch. And then I'm going to pin it. And this is gonna hold it so then I can go to my ironing board and press it and this will keep so I can then put in my zipper. So again, I'm gonna do this for this side and this side from the notch to the top. For the next step, I'm gonna turn my dress right side out. I'm still looking at the back of the dress. Here's my opening and you can see I have all my pins and I've pressed this edge on both sides. So now I'm gonna take my 22 inch zipper and I'm gonna place it behind the folded edge like this so that the fold meets right in the middle of the zipper. And you wanna start so the tab is an inch down 
from this top edge right here. So I'm just gonna get my sewing gauge, measure an inch, and then adjust about right there. Once I have the right spot, I can then start pinning this down. And I'm just taking out my pins that I currently have in here. So let me just pin this one because I also want to say you're going to be doing the same exact thing on this side. You just want to make sure that both your folds here meet right in the middle. So in a sense, your zipper is going to be hidden if you do it right. So I'm going to go ahead and pin the side and the side all the way down to the notch edges till my zipper is fully pinned in. After your zipper is pinned into the back of your dress, you're then going to baste it along both sides in order to hold the zipper in temporarily so then you can actually use a zipper foot to do a really nice clean stitch. I'm actually going to hand baste my zipper in which may seem like it should take longer, but I'm gonna do really big stitches. And actually, it'll be a lot easier to take out. So how to do a hand basting stitch is actually pretty easy. So you can see I started from underneath, I went down, now I'm gonna come back up, and then I'm gonna go back down. To do an easier way, you can just go down and then across like this. and then pull it. So typically a hand basted stitch produces a little bit bigger, bigger stitch than you can actually do on your machine, which is why sometimes it's a little better. So I'm gonna do this along both sides and then we're gonna go to the machine and actually install the zipper with a permanent stitch. After that's done, then you can just go ahead and take out the spacing stitch because it's just temporary for now. So now we're ready to stitch in our zipper with our sewing machine. You're going to have to put on your zipper foot. This is mine. Yours might look a little differently as some of them are a really skinny small foot. Mine's a little wide with these two grooves in the side. The nice thing about zipper feet is that you're able to get really close to the zipper teeth when you're stitching. So you can sew right along there and it just makes for a really nice and neat stitch. Now if you don't know how to switch your feet, you can go ahead and check out our tutorial which shows you how to change them at professorpincushion.com. So I'm going to go ahead and start sewing here and as you can see I just have one half of the teeth here and you don't see the tab even though I'm starting at the top. I open up my zipper a little bit just so I can start stitching otherwise if you're trying to stitch around the tab it gets to be a little tricky. So I just open it up a little bit before I start. Now I'm just doing a regular width stitch and I'm gonna make sure to definitely do some back stitching. And again, I'm going right, having the edge of this foot go right along the edge of the teeth. After I do a couple of inches, I'm ready to move that tab back up. So I'm gonna put my needle down, lift my foot, and then pull up my tab. Just like that. And you're just gonna really make sure that you're only sewing the back layer of your dress. You don't accidentally sew your dress shut at the top. So make, it, make sure the front is staying out of the way. I put the foot back down and then I can continue sewing right along the teeth of the zipper. When I get down to the bottom of the zipper, I'm again gonna put my needle down, lift my foot, pivot, and then go horizontally till I get to the other side. Then I'm gonna put my needle down, lift my foot, pivot again, and then go back up the top the other side. It's basically creating a box with no top. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this. Once my zipper has been stitched into place, I can go ahead and take out all these basting stitches and then your zipper will be in and you'll be good to go to continue with the rest. 
We're now going to set our dress aside for a bit and work on the collar. So if you look at your directions, they first have the stand collar, which we're not doing. So we can skip directions 14 through 20. So I'm going to focus on step number 21 for the cape collar. With right sides together, stitch cape collar front to cape collar back at shoulder seams. And there's more to it, but we're going to focus on the first part. So you should have two pieces of the cape collar front, which is this one. It has notches on both ends, and then you have your dots. These dots are the center of the collar. So the center, and then it goes out to the edge. Then you should have two pieces of number seven, which is the cape collar back, and it has a notch on one side, and then this side is a flat end. So I'm just gonna show with this one, but you're gonna have another set which you're gonna do the same thing. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip our pieces so they're right side to right side. Just move this down here. And you're going to match the notches and the ends here. And then you're gonna stitch a 5 8 inch seam allowance, a standard seam allowance, from here to here. And you're gonna do that for both sets of your collar. Once you've finished stitching these two pieces together and you've pressed your seams open, the next part is we're gonna form our narrow hem. And you're gonna do it from this point all the way to this point. So it's basically going to form kind of a J. So you're gonna take your sewing gauge and uh, on the directions it doesn't say how much to press it up, it just says press up the hem. But if you look back to your pattern piece, You'll see right down here, it says 5 eighths of an inch hem allowed. So that's our clue right there on how much we need to press it up. So I'm going to, I'm just gonna start right here. And this is the wrong side of the collar that I'm looking at. So I'm gonna press the right side up onto the wrong side, measure 5 eighths of an inch. Once I have that, I'm going to stick a pin in to hold it. And again, I'm gonna do it all along this path right here. Once you have it all pinned, you're gonna go ahead and press it right on the edge so we create a nice clean crease. Once you have that, you're then gonna carefully remove your pins. The raw edge is now gonna be folded under to meet that crease. Then you're gonna fold it again, replace the pin. And this is what's going to create your narrow hem. So then after that point, we can start sewing it, which we'll show you. So I'm gonna go ahead, pin it, press it, fold it under again, and press it again. When doing your narrow hem, you're gonna make sure that you're gonna go right along this folded edge right here with your needle without going over. So you're just doing a regular length stitch. Don't forget to do back stitches on both ends because we don't want this coming out. And then you're just gonna go all along the edge that you just pressed. So you're gonna do this for both sets of your cape collar. So now we're on the last part of step 21. To gather center front edge of collar between small dots, stitch along seam line and one quarter inch inside seam line using a lawn machine stitch. So basically what that means is on this edge where we have our two dots, and you're gonna do this on both sides of your collar, again, this is the center of the cape collar, and between these two dots, all you're gonna do is machine stitch a basting stitch right between the two dots at 5 8 inch seam allowance. And then a quarter inch from that, going towards the edge, you're gonna do another basting stitch. So you'll have two sets of basting stitches between this dot and this dot. I finished basting my two set of stitches and the one thing I forgot to mention is make sure you do not put any back stitches because we want to gather this area right here and you can't do it if you've tied a knot at the end. So what we're going to do is now step 22, 22, pull up gathering stitches to measure one and three quarter inches, secure thread and stitch collar sections together at center front. So I have, I'm just going to start on this end and I'm gonna pull my two threads from each row, just the top. Here's the ones that are coming out at the bottom. I'm gonna leave those alone. And I'm gonna hold them with one hand and then pull while holding onto the fabric with the other hand. And you'll see it'll start to gather. 
I'm just going to go about halfway and then I'm going to do the same thing on this other side. So I'm going to pull this until you get to an area that's about one and three quarters in width right here. So I'm just going to measure this and that looks like about right. And I've already done my other one. So I'm going to just move this guy in here. So once they're both the same, what you're going to do, and I have both pieces right side up, I'm going to lay them so they're right side together. I have all this thread hanging, but you just got to move it out of the way. You're going to pin it on this edge and then do a 5 8 inch seam allowance and press it open. And then that part of the cape collar will be together. Step 23 now, we're taking care of the knot. Fold knot in half lengthwise with right sides together, having raw edges even, stitch long edges in 3 8 inch seam. So here is my knot, and uh, you're going to see one side is going to be longer than the other side. With the right side facing up towards you, you're going to fold this in half so the raw edges meet, and then you're going to pin and stitch a 3 8 inch seam allowance just on this edge right here. Once you're done with that, you're going to flip the whole thing right side out and press it, and that'll also take care of step number 24. Step number 25, wrap knot around the center of the collar matching small dots and having raw edges even, based across upper edge. So here I have my knot, it's been stitched, flipped right side out and pressed, and here I have the middle of my cape collar. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this, wrap it around the center, so we're covering all this uh, stitching part right here. And you can already go ahead and remove all your basting stitch you had right there and get rid of all those loose threads. So the raw edge of this is going to match the raw edge of your collar. Same thing on this side. So this is going to be on this side. And it's going right smack in the middle. And then this is going to match. And then once you have it lined up, just stick a couple of pins in there, and then you're going to go back to your machine, do a basting stitch, and again, it's just a temporary stitch, no back stitches, just to hold it in until we can get our permanent stitches in, just like that. So yeah, you're just going to go ahead and baste right across here to hold it all together. We're now going to attach our cape collar with step number 26. On outside, pin collar to neck edge, matching centers, and placing small dots at shoulder seams, baste. So here is the front of my dress at the top collar section and it's right side out and the front is facing up. I'm going to take my cape collar, here's the center, right side of it is facing up and we're going to attach the center to the center of my dress in the front. So in this particular case you're not doing right side to right side, you're doing the wrong side of your collar to the right side of your dress. So the center is going to match. You're going to match the side seam of your cape collar with the side seam of your dress. So then you're going to pin that. And then the end of your collar with the end of your dress like that. So you see we have these also these little notches right here. These notches should just match right up. So I'm going to go ahead and pin all the way here. Same thing on the other side. So the whole collar is attached and then you're just going to do another temporary basting stitch right along this top edge here just so we can have everything connected. Moving on to step 27 now, we're now going to be working with the neck facing and the first thing we need to do is apply our fusible interfacing to the wrong side of the front and back facing sections. So I have my fusible interfacing right here and you should have one of the front facing and two of the back facing and the same pieces in your fusible interfacing already cut out. And I went ahead and trimmed my fusible interfacing a little bit because since there's going to be seam allowance and stuff, you don't need the fusible interfacing to go all the way to the edge and it just helps it fit a little bit better. 
so none of it is sticking out. So I'm just going to lay it, and you'll notice one side of your interfacing, if you touch it, it has a, it has a texture to it. That is the little glue bubbles they have there. That goes to the wrong side of your piece. So the smooth side should face up towards you. And once you have it laid out how you want, you're then going to take a pressing cloth, which I have here, a really old one that I've used forever. And you're carefully going to lay it on top of your pieces, trying not to shift anything. Once that's on there, you're then going to dampen your cloth. Or you could dampen it before you lay it down. Whatever method is easy enough for you. And then with a hot iron, you're then going to lay it across your pieces carefully for about five to seven seconds. And then you're gonna lift up. Be careful not to shift your iron as you're doing this because you could move your pieces underneath the cloth. So then I just move on to the next section and the next one until my pieces are fused to my fabric. The next step is stitching the shoulder seams of the facing sections. So again, this is the front. This where the notches are, are the shoulders. I have everything right side facing up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna match the notches of the back one with the notches of the front one. So I'm going to stitch this actually on this side and stitch this one on this side. And how I know that is because when you stitch it and press it open, it should form a little circle like this. If I put this one on this side, it's obviously, it's gonna look funny. So that's why I do it on this side. So again, matching the edges and the notches, I'm going to pin. I'm gonna stitch a standard 5 8 inch seam allowance, and then I'm gonna press it open. We're now gonna do the edge finish of section number 27. To do it on this unnotched edge right here, you're gonna stitch one quarter inch from the edge. So all along this whole section, you're just gonna to go to your machine and with a regular width stitch, you're just gonna stitch one quarter inch from this edge here. So it's gonna appear about right there. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll do the next section. After I do my one quarter inch stitch, which you can see right here, what I'm gonna do is fold the right side to the wrong side so that the stitching is right in the crease. So if you look at the right side, you can see the stitching right along the fold. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my pins in and I'm gonna do this all along that same edge. And then when I'm done, I'm just gonna press it real fast. And then just as I did with the narrow hem, I'm gonna stitch right along this edge here in order to hold all this down. Step 28, with right sides together, pin facing to neck edge over cape collar if used, matching centers and shoulder seams. Facing extends 5 8 of an inch beyond back opening edges. Stitch neck edge, trim seam, and clip curves. So here again, I have my dress right side out. Here's the top of it. And I'm gonna take my facing and turn it so it's right side to right side. So the, the interfacing part is gonna be facing up. And you're gonna match, again, the shoulder seams of your facing with the shoulder seams here of your dress. And you're gonna pin. And then the notch in the back is gonna match this notch right here. And you'll see how this overhangs the back of the zipper. That's fine, that's what's supposed to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and pin all the way around, attaching my facing to the top of the dress. And then I'm gonna do a standard 5 8 inch seam allowance to attach it. Once you've attached your facing to your dress, the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to trim your seams. So probably about half of this, and then you're gonna clip them. So creating little notches which will help the curved area lay down a little better. So you're gonna do it for the whole thing, but I'm just gonna show in the middle since it's easier for me. So I'm gonna be careful not 
accidentally cut something else in my dress. So I'm just gonna trim it like that. And then I'd say about every half inch, I'm gonna make a little notch like this. So you're gonna do it for the whole thing, but you can stay within the boundaries of your notches that are in the back. So you don't have to go over here or over here. So I'm just gonna finish doing this and then we'll move on to the next step. To continue with the facing, we're now gonna move on to step number 29. To understitch, press facing away from garment, press seam toward facing. Facing side up, stitch close to seam through facing and seam allowance. So here is my facing again, and I've already done all my, my trimming and clip the notches and everything like that. So what they're saying is you're gonna take your facing and you're gonna press it up in this direction. So this is the direction towards the bottom of your dress, so you're gonna press it up. All this stuff, all your seam allowance, is gonna be pressed up underneath your facing. So if I turn this over, that's all gonna be like that. Then what you're gonna do after you press it is you're going to take it to your sewing machine and you're gonna stitch right next to this little edge right here, but on this side of the facing, not on the side of the dress, so right here. So you're gonna do a stitch as close as you can to the edge all the way around the neckline. When doing your understitching, you're just gonna do a regular width stitch. Don't forget to do a couple of back stitches on each side. So again, you're actually stitching the facing to the seam allowance on the other side, stitching as close as you can to this little seam line right there. So I'm just gonna go all the way around without going past the zipper point. To finish the facing, we need to turn it to the inside, turning under and slip stitching the center back edges. So here is my edge by the zipper tape and I'm just gonna fold this facing to the inside and then fold it under to the inside of my dress. I'm gonna do this on the other side of my zipper as well. Just gonna throw in a couple straight pins here to hold it so then I can stitch it. And then we'll be doing a slip stitch in order to hold all this down. So I'm gonna be getting my threaded needle right here. I'll start on the facing part coming up right where I have my fold. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of the zipper tape. Like that. And then grabbing a little bit of the facing. And then the zipper tape and then the facing. So you're just zigzagging between the two areas until this area right here is secured. Okay, so that was the facing. Now I'm gonna grab a little bit of my zipper tape. Like that. And then next, a little bit of my facing. So again, just going back and forth between the two sides until I make it to the top here, at which point I could tie a knot and then do it on the other side. The last thing we need to do to keep the facing on the inside is at each of your shoulder seams, so I have one here and then I have another shoulder seam, I'm gonna press my facing down, this is on the inside of the dress, and I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna tack it down by doing a few slip stitches. So I'm coming up from underneath my little seam allowance here to my facing, and then I'm gonna grab some seam allowance. And you're, make sure you don't dig too deeply in your fabric that you're actually popping out on the front side of your dress because we don't want to see the stitches on the front. So then after I grab a little bit of seam allowance, grabbing a little bit of facing, and then back to the seam allowance, just a little bit. So I'm just gonna 
continue on finishing this. I'm going to do the other one and then we're going to move on to working on the armholes. Step 31. With right sides together, stitch ends of armhole facing. So here I have one of my pieces of the armhole facing. I have another one, but I'm just going to show on one as an example. And you'll see you have your long ways and your short way. You're just going to take this, and this is right side up. So you're going to bring these two short ends together, matching the notches. And then you're going to stitch your normal 5 8 inch seam allowance, and you're going to press that seam open. So you're going to basically create a tube. Once you've stitched and pressed your seam open like this, you're then going to fold the whole thing in half with the wrong side together. So this is the wrong side of my arm facing, and I'm going to fold it in half and pin it. And I'm going to do this all the way around, matching these notches right here. And then I'm going to press it so it lies nice and flat. So when you're done, it's going to look something like this. And then we're going to move on to step number 32. Now it's time to attach our facing to our armhole. On outside, pin facing to armhole edge, placing small dot at shoulder seam and match your remaining seams. Stitch. So here is one of my armholes. I have my dress sideways. And again, here's my facing. It's been pressed in the middle. So this goes actually on the outside of the dress. So the dress is going inside my little circle here. And I'm going to match up the edge right here of my facing with the raw edge of my dress on the armhole. My dot that's on my fabric is going to line up with the shoulder seam up here on my dress. And you're going to want to pull your cape collar out of the way because we're not going to stitch that. We're just stitching the actual dress part to the facing. The other thing we're going to match is the seam in my facing gets matched to my side seam at the bottom of this armhole. So again, matching up the raw edges, facing on the outside. And then I'm just going to pin the rest of it down. And uh, you're definitely going to do a regular 5 8 inch seam allowance all the way around. And just as you did with the collar, after you finish stitching it, you're going to trim your seams and clip your notches into it because that's very important for whenever we're doing facing. So I'm going to go ahead, pin it, do my seam allowance, and then clip and trim my seam. So I've attached my facing to my armhole and you can see I've already trimmed and clipped the notches right here in the seam allowance. So now we're going to go on to step 33. Turn facing to inside, press. Base close to inner edge of facing on outside top stitch as basted. So basically what they're saying is, this is my facing with the fold right here. I'm going to turn this so it's all on the inside of the armhole. So it's going to look nice and finished like this. If I were to look on the inside of the armhole, there's my facing. It's not very big, not very wide. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this all the way around on both armholes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press it so it's nice and clean. Once you finish pressing it, you're going to go to your machine and you're going to baste right here on this edge. So right along your folded, this is the fold right here, the facing, right along the folded edge of the facing, being careful not to go over. Now, again, this is just a temporary stitch. It's going to come out, and the reason why you're basting is if you were to look on the right side of the garment, you're going to see your basting stitch, and that's what you're going to use as your guide as you top stitch on top of the sleeve. So you can just follow along, and that way you're sh being sure that you catch your stitching or catching your facing on the edge here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that step, and then we'll move on to the next step after that. The next section we're going to work on is the hem at the bottom of the dress. So at this point, you're going to want to try it on and see how much you would like to hem up off the bottom. Now, if you look at the directions, they give two different ways to do the hem. I'm going to do the bottom version. Once you know how much you want to hem up, you're going to get your sewing gauge, and this is the wrong side of my dress, so this is the inside. You can see my seam right here. 
and for instance I am going to do an inch so I already have my sewing gauge and it's marked at the one inch mark I'm going to fold it up once I get an inch I'm going to put a pin in and I'm going to continue all the way around once I have pinned it all the way around I'm going to press the edge so again I get a nice crisp edge right here and then I'm going to move my sewing gauge to one quarter inch and this raw edge up here I'm going to turn it under a quarter of an inch so actually you know I'm going to move this my sewing gauge to three quarters of an inch because then it'll be a one quarter less so that way I'll know it's accurate and I can measure it on this side a little bit more so once that is at that mark I'm gonna pin it and then press it again and then just like you did with the the narrow hem and the edge finish you're gonna stitch right along this top edge here and once you've done that all the way around that will complete your hem after doing the hem, the last thing we need to do is just tack down our knot on our cape collar. So this is the knot that's in the middle. All I'm going to do is put a straight pin here, get my threaded needle. All I'm going to do is just do a couple of slip stitch tacks. You don't need to do it the whole way across, just a couple just to hold it down so the collar is not just going to keep popping up. So I'm just going to do a few stitches and then after this point you can go over your dress, take out any basting stitches you have, any loose threads you can cut off, get rid of your fabric markings and then your dress will be ready for you to enjoy and wear. And here we have the completed dress for Simplicity Pattern 2444. So you can see at the top we have the cape collar with the knot in the middle and the large tie fronts in the front. It's a very fun flirty party dress with a full skirt and then a nice fitted bodice and it's really cute and I can't wait to wear it. So good luck in making your own.